All right, let's just jump right in. If you're building out a serious Proxmox cluster, you are going to hit a wall, a decision that can literally make or break the whole thing, and that is choosing your shared storage. It is a critical crossroads, and today, we're gonna run the gauntlet. Now look, this isn't just some simple technical choice. It's, it's a journey. You've basically got three main paths in front of you. The old familiar SAN, which can be kind of complex, the super simple but maybe risky NFS, and then the really powerful but demanding Ceph. And trust me, each one has its own set of trials. And, you know, for those of you coming over from the, let's call it the warm, friendly, GUI-driven world of VMware, this decision is going to hit a little differently. If you get it right, you've got high availability, great performance, everything just sings. But if you get it wrong, oh boy. That means late nights and a whole lot of screaming. And yeah, that screaming is probably coming from you. The stakes are really, really high here. Okay, first up, let's try to navigate what I'm calling the SAN labyrinth. Storage area networks, right? Especially using ISCSI. They're the enterprise stable a lot of us grew up with. They promise all the good stuff. Redundancy, solid performance. But when you bring Proxmox into the mix, it's not quite that simple. And here is the fundamental problem. You're coming in expecting that rock-solid enterprise stability you're used to, but the reality of getting it to work inside Proxmox, it can feel a lot more like you're practicing some kind of command line voodoo. Things that should be simple, like getting multipathing set up for redundancy, well, they're not a point-and-click kind of deal. You know, this quote from somebody in the community just, it nails the feeling perfectly. There's this sense that you're fighting the system, that you're wrestling with it, not working with it. It just doesn't feel like it's a native first-class solution that was meant to be there. And here's what that voodoo looks like in the real world. Instead of a nice, friendly web interface, you are deep in the trenches of the command line. You're manually editing config files. You're customizing filters. You're running manual scans. It is the exact opposite of an integrated experience. Now, the big takeaway here is that it can work. I mean, some admins have iSCSI clusters that have been running totally stable for years. But then you hear the horror stories from others who've lost hundreds of hours just chasing down weird bugs. It is a very high-risk, high-reward path, and it really, really depends on how deep your team's expertise goes. So what about the next path? Well, on the surface, NFS looks like the easy button, right? The simple shortcut to get your shared storage up and running. But as we're about to see, this particular shortcut it has a pretty nasty hidden trap. The promise is just, it's undeniable. You set up a share, you mount it in Proxmox, and bam, you're pretty much done. It's quick, it's easy. But that simplicity, that is the trap. It lures you into setting up something that has this massive hidden weakness just waiting to bite you. And that trap is its single point of failure. A basic NFS setup relies on one network path. That's it which means a single bad network card, one faulty cable, even a misconfigured switch port can take your entire cluster completely offline. And for any serious production environment, that is a terrifying thought. I know what you're thinking, but wait, can't you just make it redundant? Can't you do multipathing? Well, this quote right here says it all. NFS multipathing is basically a dark art. People say they've done it, but finding out how they did it is next to impossible. For a lot of folks, it's just a really frustrating dead end. Which brings us to our third and final path, Ceph. So if the SAN is a labyrinth and NFS is a trap, then you can think of Ceph as the integrated citadel. It's powerful, it's self-contained, and it feels like it was built from the ground up for this exact ecosystem. So the promise of Ceph is that it's basically the gold standard for Proxmox. It handles all the hard stuff, high availability, scaling, performance, all of it is baked right in. But the reality? It is a hungry, hungry beast. It demands a serious amount of hardware, and maybe most importantly, a really fast and well-designed network to feed it. This right here is Ceph's biggest selling point in action. The entire workflow, from installing it, to configuring it, to keeping an eye on it, it's all handled right inside the Proxmox web interface you already know. I mean, it is a night and day difference from the command line nightmare of SAN multipathing. This is what a first-class citizen looks like. So what's actually going on under the hood here? Well, it's all about the architecture. As this admin points out, Ceph isn't just another file system you've bolted on. It's integrated at a much, much lower level. 
This gives it a more direct, a more efficient path for I.O., which can actually translate into better performance than you might even be used to. But hey, remember that hungry beast thing? This is the shopping list. This is what it eats. You're going to need dedicated network cards, and it really wants 25 gigabit or faster. You need at least three nodes for it to be properly redundant, and you absolutely have to have a carefully separated network just to handle all of its backend traffic. This is not for the faint of heart or wallet. So after going through all this tech, where do we actually land? The truth is, the real choice here isn't just about the technology itself. It's about the people who have to live with it, the people who have to manage it. The real choice is about your team. Man, this quote just cuts right to the chase, doesn't it? A true Linux expert, a real storage guru, they can make any of these systems work. But not every team has that kind of deep knowledge on hand. The best technology in the world is useless if your team can't confidently support it when things inevitably go wrong. All right, let's just break it down one last time, nice and simple. A SAN, that's for teams with those deep skills, especially if you're trying to reuse older hardware. NFS, that's really for your small, non-critical setups where you're willing to trade redundancy for simplicity. And Ceph, well, that's the modern choice for new builds where you want scalability and high availability baked right in, assuming you can feed the beast. When you boil it all down, this whole decision really comes down to just one word, trust. It's about having trust in your tools to be reliable, trust in your architecture to be resilient, and this is the most important part, trust in your team's ability to bring it all back online when it breaks. So I'm gonna leave you with this one last thought. Forget the specs, forget the speeds for just a minute. Picture this, it is three o'clock in the morning. Your foam is blowing up with alerts. The whole cluster's down. Which system do you and your team truly trust to fix right now? The answer to that question, that's your answer.